Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody, wherever you are around the world, and welcome back to another episode of Cyber Files here on Hedge and TV. My name's Manuel, I'm your host here on the show. This time we talk about modern Monored Phoenix, and I have the pleasure to have you once again on the show, the one and only Joshua Bausch from Team Phoenix New Dawn. Hello, welcome back. <laughs> welcome back to yourself, actually, welcome back to the show. I'm happy, very glad to have you here once again. And uh, you get to be here for the first episode ever recorded in, in the new studio. Yeah, it's quite nice here. Yeah. It took a long time, but finally, we are here. Yes. It's wonderful. <laughs> okay, Mono Red Phoenix. We're going to talk about the list you chose to bring in and uh, also cyber choices and then discuss a few matchups, your personal approach, what you side out, what you side in, a little bit of strategy. So yeah, let's get straight into it and have a look at the list. All right. So, this is a deck that has already I mean, a lot of cards that are staples. The core is very big and is over yes. there. So, I would like to ask you just any particular choices that you would like to stress, you would like to underline, you know, different from other decks that you see around? Yeah, having the traditional Phoenix list, there is no much room of invention. You can change it having a ninth one drop. Or, uh, or not, or having some late game spells in form of Battle and Reveler or Finale of Promise. I went with the traditional approach of having some late game spells in form of Battle and Reveler and not relying on more, like um, having more one drops um, than nine one drops. I'm just going with the normal aid of Monastery Suspi and Soulscar Mage to having a mix of being as fast as possible and also have some recursion in the late game. Okay, well, yeah, Battle and Reveler, a little bit for the, let's say, mid-game. You're shaving here, one got shot and one, yeah, one other, one other spell, like I don't know, for instance, Lava Dart. Lava there Dart. are other versions that play four Lava Dart and four got shot. You play a little bit less of those. Exactly. You still have the creatures, yeah. These, these cards are, um, you, you need them because they are kind of free spells to regain your Phoenix or have some um, free ways of uh, gaining prowess in form of gutshot, just paying to life, making normally two to three damage out of it and having Lava Dart making uh, sometimes four damage out of it because, or even more, depends on how many uh, prowess creatures you have out of the battlefield. Uh, and generating these free spells, um, yeah, brings your phoenixes back a lot faster than, than normally. Uh, you have, if you have an faithless looting in your starting hand and a phoenix, Normally, you, you could do bring your Phoenix back on turn two. Mm -hmm. okay. Sometimes it costs you a mountain because you have to flash back uh, a Lava Dart, but um, maximizing your damage output that way is it's totally fine. Um, so why did you choose actually to have the Bedlam Reveler? So this is like a deck that is almost all in, but a little bit less only all in than other versions as far as I understand. Yeah, if you have more of these Lava Dart gut shots, these are not good spells if you have an, um, yeah, have a value in cards. Just having one mana or two life for just one damage is not a good card in its own. So you have a synerg synergistic kind of deck that you need these car uh, specific cards to maximize the power of these free spells in form of Gutshot and Lava Dart um, that you don't want to draw just four in your starting hand. Okay, so it's okay having three of each of those by having yes. two Bedlam Reveler that you can, you know, get more gas. Yes, exactly. A it's eventually yeah. you run out of gas. Sometimes, most of the time the opponent is dead, but sometimes if he's not, you need some more cards. And Bedlam Reveler is a way to uh, generate these. Yeah, okay. So um, having two more, uh, yeah, like mid to late game cards that fill up your hand and, uh, yeah, Finding the last points of burn that way helps a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, yeah, I have a question about the lands. Actually, you have eighteen mountain straight yes, straight mountains. There are lists that actually employ this new lands, the pain lands from Modern Horizons. That you can also sack to draw a card. You chose not to. You chose just to go with the mountains. Why? Why is that? Yeah, yeah some people play three uh, canopy lands um, over three mountains. Um, 
there are situations in form uh, when you draw too many lands. Yeah, you just you can cantrip, cantrip for two mana and a land drop. That's fine. And sometimes you can get your out, your lava um, spike or lightning bolt draw, drawing with that. But um, having the downside of pain lands uh, in a deck that sometimes, as most of the times, comes in a race situation and losing two to three to four life uh, just because of your lands, uh, it's not going to help you winning this race situation. So that's why I just prefer um, uh, just going with mountains because this deck is normally a deck that can kill on turn three or is close to killing on turn three. And so you don't often have the time to uh, crack um, yeah, one of the canopy lands to draw a card. You know, sometimes are a mana short of killing a turn earlier than, uh, uh, than, you, uh, than you are. Um, so second lands is not the way to go, I would say. Some other people are playing Ramana Bruins. It's a land that's if you, you can tap four and the Ramana Ramana Bruins uh, to sacrifice a, a waste. No, I think a, it's a desert. A desert. Yeah, that's the one you're talking about, yeah. And uh, the making, Amonkhet block. Exactly, and making two uh, damage to your opponent. That's a consideration as well. But having five lands in play is very hard when you play Lava Darts because sacrificing mountains. Um, yeah, it's most of the most of the time a play you do on turn two, on turn three, and um, then not coming to the total amount of five lands on the battlefield is pretty hard. Especially because of Lava Darts, you can't run not mountains because uh, you sometimes come into equation to um, sacrifice three mountains um, while you only have three lands in play uh, to finish your opponent. It comes up and not having the option to do so um, paints quite a bit. Okay, okay. So you want to make sure that in the early game you have only mountains. Exactly. And if you need to go really crazy, you need to pay a flashback cost. Exactly. Like the one that is required by, um, by the card, Lava Dart. Exactly. You need to be able to do it. Yes. And that single damage could actually make the difference between closing the game there on the spot or not. Exactly. Okay. Or having okay. the finishing blows against some uh, some specific decks. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, yeah, they mill your lava darts, for example, and then having not the option to deal one more damage that means uh, it's about winning or losing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, crucial there. Shall we talk about the cyber now? Sure. Okay, so you have two Abrade, two Shrine of Burning Rage, one Flame Slash, two Ravenous Trap, one Alpine Moon, one Shutter Storm, two Surgical Extraction, two Surgical Extraction, sorry, two Blood Moon and two Anger of the Gods. So lots of cards that do different things in there mm -hmm. and a little bit of backup in, in the case of Fame Slash. So um, what kind of sideboard is this? Like, Is it like tuned for competitive events, we would say, like big tournaments and stuff like that? Exactly. You want to have... Sometimes you, you go into the role of trying to be as fast as possible, and sometimes you have to um, yeah, kill creatures. There are, um, are many different, de diff different decks in modern right now. To um, yeah, You have to prepare for everything and being the proactive uh, deck, like you are with Mono Red Phoenix. You sometimes have to switch a little bit around, but uh, try not to um, yeah, thrive uh, up from your main deck configuration of uh, killing your opponent as fast as possible. So um, having some specific answers for specific matchups, even for the popular decks mm -hmm. we will talk about, um, you need specific cards like Surgical Extraction or Raven or Strip. Normally these cards are very specific, but uh, with the popularity of some decks, um, you kind of need these effects right now in competitive magic. Okay, so better having those two cards as Graveyard Hate rather than Leyline of the Void, for instance. Yeah, if we talk about uh, specific cards, uh, specific matchups, Leyline would probably be the best answer to some. Uh, but because we are a spell-oriented, uh, prowess-oriented deck, we need to have spells that you can cast in your turn and um, yeah, trigger the Arclight Phoenix or the prowess effects of um, uh, our one drops. So um, that's why we go with Surgical and Ravenous Trap instead of uh, Leyland of the Void or something else. Okay. I've seen lists of actually having the cyborg 
um, different cards. Mm -hmm. For instance, I've seen Liszt play one copy of Sally Healy, uh, Sublime Artificer, some Liszt that actually play Shenanigans from Modern Horizons. Um, so there is like quite a variety of cards. But in your case, for instance, for the artifact, you have Shatterstorm, for instance. Why, why is that? There are some um, artifact-based strategies where you just just want to have the whole board gone. There are these, um, yeah, these lantern control-ish kind of decks that want to lock you out with different hate pieces and want to protect their um, hate cards with uh, cards that regenerate their, uh, their uh, regenerate their artifacts. And Shadow Storms just shatters them all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they can't like even regenerate it, yes. Yeah. Uh, so that's like the I win card against kind of these decks. And um, yeah, a card like Shenanigans is there kind of slow because you just have to stretch it on and on and on and on. And you don't progress in your game plan at all. Sure, it's a card you can discard or mill or I don't know with um, your card effects and it will always come back, except it gets exiled. But um, having just this one card, it's a one-off, and having this one card, this, the most impactful card in your, in your sideboard, uh, is in my opinion the Shatterstone. Okay, this is the one you, you want to have. Yes, there are more artifact hates in form of a braids, uh, but these are a card that is a flexible one because it also cuts creatures, and uh, so you bring these kind of cards uh, that are you could, uh, a good use for multiple kind of uh, matchups and more often than uh, specific cards like Shatterstorm. Yeah, okay. Well, there are several cards of the cyber that you have here are actually, let's say, um, standard inclusions. Uh, the upgrade you were mentioning, also the Shrine of Burning Rage. You see them, You see these cards almost everywhere. I mean, uh, even Blood Moon, for instance, it's, it's played you know, in most of sideboards. Alpine Moon, though, it's not really there all the time but you chose to include it in one copy in your sideboard. And uh, I'd like to ask you why, actually, you have it there. I um, met, um, I played against some more of the, of the um, land combo-ish decks in form of Emulatite and Tron, where they want to maximize their mana in f with lands and uh, try to combo kill you or overwhelm you with um, big mana spells. And therefore, I like the um, Alpha Moon a lot more than Blood Moon because Blood Moon is a turn three play in your deck. You can't play it earlier than turn three. And sometimes it's, if you're on a draw, it's too late. For Tron, they play their third Tron piece and play a Boom Call Engine. And sometimes you're done for. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing you can do yeah. about that. Then. Not fast enough. Not fast yeah. enough. Um, yeah, and them gaining six life every, um, every turn is not a way you can beat normally. Sure, there are some equations you win. Uh, you outmaneuver your opponent, but uh, you don't need to come to this situation. So having a one-mana play and shutting down their Tron um, is a kind of big deal. Okay, but you still will do the split, like sure. Alpine and Blood Moon, not, sure. not three Alpine Moon, for instance. Blood Moon is, it's like, you want Blood Moon is a weird card. If um, we have a multicolored format with uh, many different, decks that have like three or four colors and don't play many basic lands, you can punish them just by outlocking the game. For example, there are decks like a Trazitron. They play a lot of colors lands, and if they don't have a colors mana, they can't play their spells. For that instance, Blood Moon is a really good, cool card because then you can lock them out. They try also lock you out with Chalice of the Void. So sure. you play this kind of game. You can't play your spells, I can't play my spells. So we can both play these games. Um, but um, in the end, Blood Moon is a very tricky card. If your opponent sees it, you should often board it out because it's not going to work twice normally um, because the people will play around it. And only having playing around it is adventurous, adventurous for you because then they are, have a weird mana base or weird mana situation where they can't really cast all the spells they want. And uh, that's also an advantage. Uh, advantage to have just Blood Moon in your sideboard. Getting sometimes a free win, and uh, most of the times people playing around it and, um, yeah, get an advantage that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like it's not on the battlefield, but it's already, you know, making somehow an impact on the game. Exactly. 
just for the thought that you could cast it. You know, players and your opponents have to respect Blood Moon and yes. playing accordingly. And this is, as you said, is an advantage for you. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Let's talk about Anger of the Gods. You have two copies. And uh, the other sweeper that you see around is Kozilek's Return. Mm -hmm. But you chose Anger of the Gods. At the moment, you feel it's better for the, the, the kind of metagame you expect in big tournaments? As I would say, with um, the split between both, uh, Kozilek's Return is a better card. But uh, for there are many hate cards around it with Protection of Red. And Kozilek's Return is a colorless spell, so that deals with them. Uh, but Anger of the Gods dealing one more damage to creatures can uh, kill a lot more stuff. For example, human, humans. Humans are a popular deck still going on in modern, and most of the creatures are two threes or three threes when you play them. Some of them get even bigger, so you have to watch out. Sometimes your even your Anger of the Gods is not an answer to them anymore, but uh, still having the answer in form of three damage uh, sweepers is um, better than having a two damage sweeper. Okay, so you want that extra damage. This exactly. is what you want. Okay, if it's a concession to uh, to humans. If I um, yeah, if I if humans wouldn't exist, I would go with anger of the gods. Instant speed is nice, and also having a colorless card because killing um, yeah, Aureok champion for example is a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay, excellent. So how about we start talking about some matchups? Let's go for it. Okay. <laughs> I guess it's like the most interesting part of the show mm -hmm. <laughs> with cyber plans and stuff because like everybody's now asking for cyber plans exactly. all around. Exactly, everyone wants to know yeah, what they on do. On Twitter, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's start with the first one. The first one, Hogak Bridgevine. I mean, this new thing that's that came out. Thing, yeah, a, crazy, it's crazy. crazy. The Drazis, the Hogak Summer. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is playing Hogak. It, it might end pretty soon, though. Let's hope. Because, yeah, uh. we will see. Okay, well, but even if you know, in case it doesn't end, it doesn't end. You know, let's cover this straight away and you know give some information about. It. So first of all, favored or unfavored for Moderate Phoenix? If you win the die roll, it's. I think it's an even matchup. It most of the times comes down who wins the die roll. I had to that end. point, is that to, extreme? To that point, it's that extreme. I have, we both have hands that kills on turn three. If he wins a die roll, he wins. If I win a die roll, I win. And um, yeah, you have to maximize, maximize out your damage output in that matchup. And uh, sometimes even the milling plan of them is not enough. When they try to combo kill you, yeah. you try to maximize out your, dam your damage. And they sometimes go to four or to three. And um, then they start milling you. Um, you always have an upkeep. So uh, you untap your lands, you have an upkeep, you try to ha to keep your instant speed burn spells in your hand, and they mill your whole deck, so they mill your lava darts. You still have mountains on the battlefield. That's why we came with 18 mountains and no inclusion of Ramana Bruins or uh, Canopy lands. You want to have your mountains on the battlefield, and then you have this little chip damage still remaining. Minimum of three, because you play three lava darts. If you have three lands, you can still make three damage. Uh, sometimes you have a lightning bolt, you can up to do six damage. And uh, that sometimes can win you the game, even though they melt you completely out. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Instant speed, you can just get this extra damage. And, exactly, that's why yeah. I choose uh, Mono Red Phoenix uh, in the last couple of events, because of the popularity of Hogak, and uh, don't want to play Hogak myself because of the, all the hate that running around. We have just four hate cards in a sideboard, but people go crazy to like eight or six to eight. That's the kind of normal thing right now because it's that powerful and I can agree with that. It does stupid things. It can win, win out, <laughs> out of nowhere. And uh, yeah, we out will see control. about, the, about the, new, the, the, the next bending and restricted list. I think something will get bent. My bet is auto the mansion. Yeah, that's quite a good one. That will not hurt any other things. Yeah, that's what I thought. And yeah. uh, this card is a problem. If they don't, if I only have um, um, the damage based stuff, that's fine. They win on turn four. They win on turn five. That's a normal deck. But winning on turn three with one drop, two drop, altar, and you're done for. It's Horrible. Yeah, sure, 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 mm -hmm. absolutely. Okay, going a little bit into details here. So, cyber plans, what goes out and what goes in? 
What's your approach? So my approach is uh, be as fast as possible. Yeah. Because, as I mentioned, the games don't go longer than turn three. Yeah. So cards like Final of Promise and Bethlehem Reveler are cards that normally cast on turn four or turn five. Um, Finale maybe on turn three if you have the perfect start, but normally you you don't have enough uh, cards in there. So these cards come out. Um, therefore, we have uh, yeah the graveyard hate in form of Ravenous Trap and Surgicals in because um, you want to disrupt them and be as fast as possible. So you don't draw your late game stuff because you can't cast it anyway because the late game uh, doesn't go that long. And um, switching out for disruptive elements helps you in that matchup. Okay, this is like a very, very straightforward plan. I mean, this exactly. is what, what you, you want do, to do. You yeah. try to maximize the damage output as fast as possible, try to win on turn three. Yeah. Even um, You have to play your sorcery burn spells before you play your instant burn spells because, as I mentioned, if they mill you out, you will get your upkeep and can make uh, yeah, damage in that yeah. instance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Use that window opportunity to just finish the game. Exactly. Yeah, right there. All right, let's go for the next matchup. We have humans, right? Exactly. So favorite or unfavorite humans? How does it look like to you? Um, if they draw Talia, it's hard. <laughs> but having uh, free spells in form of Lava Darts or, and uh, Kachot is a hel uh, helps a lot. Uh, but in the end, I would say it's with the sideboard kind of a little bit unfavored because they have cards like Aureok Champion that gain them life. They can produce a very fast clock on its own. And they have cards like Madding Mage, uh, Kiteseal Freebooter, and I said Talia, that disrupt, disrupt you a lot and uh, go into your game plan. And having creatures to jump with, um, your one-drops, is quite important for them as well. They try to win in the air with Mantis Rider or overwhelm you with some... Um, uh, big creatures, but um, sometimes you're not big enough. And if you don't have the Phoenix draw, it gets kind of hard. Mm -hmm. Okay. So slightly unfavored. This is no, what slightly unfavored. Yeah. Uh, if the, if the uh, humans uh, player knows how the matchup works, if he just have to block your way, uh, kill your Phoenix, and um, go in with chip damage and disrupt you, then I think it's slightly unfavored. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that you can't win it. I won it a lot of the times. Yeah, sure, but slightly doesn't mean that it's like a disaster. Yeah, because, yes, it's unwinnable. It's, it's like yeah. humans. You have like, uh, they have disruptive elements, and every time you try to uh, synergy uh, draw your opponent out with having as much as burn spells and um, prowls triggers as possible in one turn uh, can hurt you much. If you if they play Kaitsi Freebooter and you wanted to turn... Uh, turn to uh, Mana Morphosa into spell into looting and discard phoenixes and they take your looting, you can't do it, can't do it anymore because they disrupted uh, your plan and that's humans for it. They do that all the time. Sure, sure. They have a plan against you, of yes. course. So you have also a plan against them. I that's mean, why that's, it's a popular yeah, deck. Yeah, 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 sure. Oh, very strong, absolutely. I mean, absolutely. Very solid. So generally speaking, what's your strategy? What's your game plan in the game's post-cyboard? What do you want to do? You have to kill uh, some specific creatures um, in form of uh, Talia and um, yeah, sometimes Cats a Freebooter or a Mantis Rider because they kill you as uh, fast as possible. Uh, so you try to go a little bit in the controlish direction okay. of having some removal spells, but also try to uh, yeah, kill as fast as possible. You want to overwhelm your opponent, uh, just won't let them come onto the board as, uh, as fast as possible and yeah, just overwhelm them. Okay, so let's talk about cyber plans then. Just go, what, what, uh, yeah, what's out? what goes out? Out goes two Final of Promise. As I mentioned, Talia or Meddling Mage can disrupt this card uh, quite a bit. With Talia, you have to pay one extra for each spell you want to cast. So, for example, normally you, you flashback Lightning Bolt and Lava Spike. So this costs... Uh, Six mana, all of a sudden, and six mana is not something that this, this deck want to produce. Sure. Um, and then three gachos coming out. They have Talia and um, some other one toughness creatures, but uh, paying to life is always very painful. And uh, if they put a plus one plus one counter on one of their creatures in form of Talia's lieutenant, gachos 
doesn't really kill them anymore. So it's not that impactful and you want to replace that card with more uh, impactful or more better burn removal spells. Sure, you need more efficient spells yes. to take care I mean, of these targets. Gatchard is very efficient with just having to lose two life to kill a creature, but sometimes one damage is not enough to kill one. Um, that's why you maximize the damage on that on that spell then, rather than the efficiency and the mana cost. Mm -hmm. All right. So what, what comes in? Two braid, two anger of the gods, and one flame slash. The braid and the flame slash are just damage-based removal. Uh, try to cheap as possible. And anger of the gods is a sweeper that sometimes can just go one-sided. If you have a phoenix, unfortunately for the phoenix, it will go away. But... Um, you can pair it up with Swift Beers and Soul Mage. Sometimes that you put them to a four toughness in form of casting a spell and then casting in after gods, uh, that will lead to their survival. And yeah, killing three toughness creatures on the board of your opponent quite helps. So it's basically answers in the end. Yes, it's like it's yeah. a sweeper. Just yeah. uh, try to one one sided sweeper in the end, and yeah, sometimes you need it. Yeah, absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. And that's uh, that's what you want to do, mm -hmm. as you said. Like kill as much trees as possible and try to burn your opponent out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. And uh, yeah, this this is the side of the like the more controlish role that you want to assume, right? Exactly. Being able to wipe the board, stabilize, taking control of the game, and then do your thing, which is bashing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that's it. Okay, excellent. So we can talk about matchup number three now. Blue white control. Yes. Same question. Favoured or unfavoured? I would say this is uh, quite unfavoured because uh, them having counter spells, help of new counter spells from the new Modern Horizon set in form of the new Force of Will, the Force of... Um, negation? Negation um, is quite a huge deal because you want to cast as much spells as possible, sometimes in a chain of um, activation, so... Like, in instance, Mana Morphosis is, an, is most of the time the first spells you cast cost two mana, and if you have just two lands, they just skip your whole turn by just countering those. And having cheap removal spells, a lot of basic lands um, to fetch four, and generating card advantage and countering your specific spells is quite hard for you in the end. Okay, so since it's pretty hard... What's your strategy in the games post cyborg? What do you want to do? Yeah, you want to um, take out bad cards. Yeah, you don't have a lot to bring in because there are in a planeswalker uh, oriented uh, control strategy at the moment, so you don't have really that much interaction with planeswalkers. Um, you have a card that's uh, very good in the sideboard, uh, but it's just a two off. So you have a lot of bad cards, burn spells, try to go right to the face and um, kill your opponent as fast as possible, but also um, yeah, make as much draws uh, trigger and generating damage that way, but them having Path to Exile. Yeah, yeah. You often come in the time to cast your Phoenixes, uh, but they have the possibility of exiling them so they are, can't come back. Uh, but Phoenix is the most reliable strategy against control strategies because they can come back. Sure, sure. The recursive nature. Yes, the recursive yeah. nature. So, um, yeah, you try to maximize them as much as possible. Oftentimes you have to kill your own phoenix with a lightning bolt because um, they try to puff to exile it because it's your most reliable source of damage. Uh, yeah, so you have to watch out for that. Yeah, okay. That's a very good idea, actually, to keep your eyes open mm -hmm. <laughs> and make sure that your phoenix is always in the bin and not exiled forever, absolutely. Okay, cyber plans. What goes out and what comes in? Um, what goes out is two gutshot, because um, as I mentioned, we don't have much uh, really good sideboard cards uh, against them. The only card in the sideboard that, that's good against them is uh, Shrine of Burning Rage, and that's a very good card because they don't have um, artifact destruction spells or artifact hate in their in their main deck. They have Stony Silence in their sideboard most of the time but that's not a card they're bringing in against us. So normally the Shrine is uh, pretty safe, except for Cryptic Command. Cryptic Command is a card that can always counter spells and bounce the Shrine, but uh, 
if you reestablish it, it can tick up again and it's a time bomb in itself. So um, if you have three mana, when it's like at eight, nine, ten, sometimes even more counters, uh, you can shot, uh, just shot them and finish them off that way. So it's a pretty reliable source of killing them. It takes time, but you also play as much spells as possible, so it um, yeah, gets pretty charged up pretty quickly. So um, yeah, that's a way of uh, win condition. So Gutshot is, as I said, we we, uh, we put two Gutshot out. We still have one in the deck. It's not a good card. As I mentioned, it's a free spell. Sometimes gets you um, an extra prowess trigger. But if you get to it, you try to maximize it as fast as possible uh, because you won't get a chance otherwise um, and try to finish them up yeah, as fast yeah, as I mean, possible your, your game despite plan is, playing around Path of Exile. Yeah, your game plan is still the same in the end and nothing changes. Yes. Just getting rid of a bad card and getting a better card. And one could argue that you don't have many resources with this matchup in the sideboard for this one. But at the same time, I don't really know if you want to sacrifice slots in your sideboard for blue-white control Unless yeah, you really play in your local meta and have a heavy control. I can know. see myself putting more cards on my sideboard, but I think with Fogart out there uh, at the moment, that's not the right time. Yeah. So dedicating yourself to beating Hogak is more important than beating Blue-White Control. Mm -hmm. There was a time that Blue-White Control was more popular than anything else. Therefore, you had to, con uh, had to have more cards in your sideboard uh, than you used to be. But at the moment, I think it's not the case. You still have uh, ways of generating advantage. You have Finale of Promise, you have Bedlam Reveler, you have um, um, Light Up the Stage. So all good cards that's providing two-for-ones and uh, you can um, try to win over that. Yeah, sure. You have some tools already, your main deck, and yeah, that's dying there. Games go, games go longer and you have more uh, time to draw your outs. Okay, so. okay. So these cards, yeah, can do the trick. Exactly. Good, so let's talk about another matchup, uh, another evergreen in modern. Talk about Tron. The good old Ta one. Yeah, the good old one. <laughs> so here, favorite or not favorite? That's you? a favorite matchup. Okay. Um, as before, Tron struggled with burn strategies or decks that tried to kill on turn three. Um, they have a car, they have Worm Call Engine, um, and if they provide them turn three on the play, it can be very hard for you. But they cut it down on Worm Call Engine because they shifted to uh, the new Khan based strategy of um, uh, Tron. So, like playing the new Four Mana Khan and then searching uh, artifact cards out of the sideboard and try to win with uh, Mariscope Lettuce. It's a card that shuts you down completely. It's an artifact that um, um, makes all cards into artifacts in hand, in graveyards. On the battlefields, even your lands get artifacts. On in combination with Karn, uh, says uh, you can't activate um, artifact abilities, so you just get completely shut down. Okay. Um, that's a new way of approaching um, the meta. I think I even like it. But um, with the de format that fast at the moment, uh, people get killed on turn three. We want to start playing at turn three with Tron. So I think it's... Um, yeah, pretty hard to be a Tron player at the moment. The strategy is very strong, but at the same time, the meta now is so fast, at exactly. least the competitive levels, that you don't have to be afraid of that kind of you know, plan in the end. You want to kill them before they execute that kind of thing. Exactly, and you yeah. just burn your opponents out, be as fast as possible, um, and burn. Um, Tron always struggled with uh, fast burn strategies. Yeah. Yeah, so what you want to do in the game post cyber, so it's already pretty clear. I mean, you just mm. want to be fast. Yes. Close the game as fast as play possible. Play one drop, play some spells on turn two, play some spells on turn three, and you most of the time won the game. Yeah, okay, perfect. So going into details here, cyber plans, what comes out and what comes in, what's your approach? As an outcome, Battle Reveler and Gutshot. Gutshot for not very impactful, and Battle Reveler for uh, a late game spell that has not the impact you want. You want late game spells for the final of Promise because there will um, be burn spells on its own, three mana, six damage most of the time, a flashbacking lava spike and lightning bolt. Um, and as I said, they will play Worm Call Engine, so having a creature that attacks into Worm Call Engine is not very good. Um, that's why Battle Mirror will come out. What comes in are Braid, Alpine Moon, and Blood Moon. Alpine Moon and Blood Moon are kind of the same. It's like land... Disruptive, uh, disruptive cards 
that uh, want to deny them their Tron. Alpha Moon and a cheaper variant, in a variant that's uh, not worse, not better than Blood Moon. Um, but Blood Moon is cost three mana, and three mana is sometimes not enough on a draw. Two of Braid are just disruptive for their uh, artifacts. Sometimes they come in a situation where they have their Khan out, they play their lettuce or play their artifacts, and you want to get rid of them, float mana, and then destroy them with a Braid. Sometimes on the play, sometimes you, you get an expedition map, so they struggle to assemble Tron even. That's why you bring it in. Yeah, yeah, it makes perfect sense, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a, it's a very clear plan, and uh, I like it when I hear clear plans. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, excellent. So let's go for another matchup. And uh, talking about Phoenixes, well, there is also the other variant, of yes. course, uh, is it Phoenix. So you can encounter th this one. And uh, how is it actually for you, Mono Red versus the is it Phoenix? I think favorable it's a, or, or I think it's a favorable matchup mm -hmm. because you are faster than them. You do pretty much the same. The only difference is that the blue Phoenix uh, deck gets uh, um, a new card for their sideboard in form of Aria. Uh, the new Aria, the three mana enchantment that gives your opponent 10 life and then adds counter and does damage to your opponent by the amount of spells yeah, you cast. Aria of Flame, yeah. Aria of Flame. Um, that's a very good card. I like it pretty much, but it's unfortunately unplayable in Mono Red Phoenix because you don't see that much cards and don't draw that much cards. Then you are able in Blue Red Phoenix. But other than that, they fight with Thing in the Ice and Phoenix and you try to have cheaper uh, creatures and uh, more try to chain more spells and more damage um, over the course of the first three turns um, yeah, to kill them pretty fast. And they sometimes try to that they sometimes have the start of turn two or turn turn three more uh, phoenixes as well. But uh, I think you do it more consistency uh, consistent because you just need in faith of thing and then you have free spells in form of gutshot and lava darts to always recurse your phoenixes on turn two. Okay, so they can be explosive as well, but uh, I think you're more than most of the time. Yeah, is more explosive. Yeah, yeah, you have actually more chances, let's say. The mm -hmm. odds are in your favor to be more explosive than they are most exactly. of the time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what do you want to do in those games post cyborg Strategy speaking, you know, generally speaking. Just try to be faster than them and that's it? You want to have some disruptive elements in form of removal spells and surgical extractions for the phoenixes. They, okay. will, do, they will do the same. They have surgicals in their sideboard. They want to catch their phoenix, uh, your phoenixes and you want to catch them their phoenixes because... Recursion of uh, phoenixes is the best uh, source of uh, damage outcome you can have, and um, that's the fastest way of uh, to kill them. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's have a look at the cyber plan. Then your cyber plan. So what goes out and what goes in? Out goes three gutshot and two battle reveler, and in goes uh, two abrade, one flame slash, and two surgicals. Gutshot as multi dimensions, very good game one card because you want to maximize the damage output as fast as possible with free spells. And um, not so good anymore in the sideboard games because I want more impactful cards. On uh, Battle Marvel you take out because it's it's a horror. It's good against Thing in the Ice because it didn't get bounced. But um, they try to win as fast as possible as well. And their way of uh, killing you is with Thing in the Ice or Recursion Phoenix. Um, therefore, Battle Marvel is a very, very slow and not impactful when you play it. So that's uh, where you can you have to board it out. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, All right, has not has good enough. Impact. Simple it, as that. It's good, but the problem is uh, you play it and then basically your turn is over. It's not what you want to have in these kind of matchups. Okay, okay, I see. So in goes a braid flame session surgical as mentions surgicals for the phoenixes. Sometimes hitting bold is very important. Very important as removing key cards uh, out of the opponent decks. Uh, it's important. It's a free spell. It triggers your prowess. It brings back your phoenix as proactive. That's why it's a very good card in the matchup. Flame Slash is one mana, very efficient, kills thing in the ice. Speaks for itself in a braid. Is, it's a three mana burn spell. Sometimes they have artifact cards in their sideboard to disrupt you. Sometimes you need it, sometimes you don't need it. And having to remove a phoenix uh, 
and playing the kind of tempo-oriented game um, is very important. Also, uh, with Skull Scarmage, your damage spells put minus one, minus one counter on creatures. Shrinking a thing in the eyes uh, can come up handy. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so let's talk about another matchup. Combo decks, combo time. Let's talk about a uh, Druid combo, because fast meta, mm -hmm. everybody, everybody wants to win in the first three turns or something like exactly. that. Exactly. So yeah, Druid combo is one of the you know, best candidates, best choices to, to do that. So quite likely to be encountered in a competitive event. Exactly. How do you see that? Favored or unfavored for you? I think it's favored. As long as I don't start with the card Giver of Runes. Okay. <laughs> uh, Giver of Ruins is the new kind of mother of ruins effect that can protect other creatures, but not themselves anymore. That was the most the, the power of the mother himself. Um, but also, you want to kill the druid and then protecting with a one drop. It's kind of hard or kind of important for them um, because then you need two removal spells instead of one. So you just have one lightning bolt and they, you, they play Giver, you have to lightning bolt to Giver. And then if you play Druid, you come in an awkward position of, please don't have it on turn three. <laughs> other than that, I think you have a lot of burn spells. They have creatures. And normally, is other burn spells favored and form uh, uh, against the creatures. So uh, I would so, say that's a favorite. Yeah, you are, you're fairly able to, to deal with, with the threats and uh, exactly. making sure that they don't execute their game plan in the end, that mm -hmm. they don't combo off. Yes. This is probably your priority in terms of uh, general strategy in the game's post Simon, right? Mm -hmm. You yeah. don't want them to reach that point. Exactly. You don't you don't kill them as fast as possible because you you all you go into this I control I go into the controlish part of game because um, they're a creature based combo deck and you have removal spells. Use the removal spells and then do chip damage with your creature with your creatures, your one drops or your phoenixes, and eventually they will die. Okay. Okay. Totally understood. So let's go for the details here. The cyber plan. Mm -hmm. What do you board out first, and what you board in afterwards, as usual? We bought out uh, two bed and reveler and three gutshot. Gutshot is um, is a removal spell. We could need it here, but all the creatures have two uh, toughness, except for the vizier. Uh, and the vizier is normally played when they have to do it, so that doesn't stop them from comboing. That's uh, where we bought it out. And you bought out Baton Reveler. As I mentioned before, it's a play. You play it and then your turn is over. And uh, you can't really do that against a combo deck, tapping out and then just get combo killed. It's not where you want to be. Bring in a two abrade, two anger of God and one flame sledge. As I mentioned, more creature removal, more sweeper effects, sometimes one-sided sweeper effects. Um, getting rid of the creatures here most prior uh, it's a most priority. And keeping them from comboing off um, lets you win the game. Yeah, very straightforward. Mm -hmm. Totally understood. Okay, so we have another matchup here to talk about, and is Amulet Titan because that's another combo deck. Exactly, and they struggle against red as well. Okay, <laughs> so uh, we are quite favored here again. All right. Um, with the early banning of some years ago of the form of Summer Bloon. They went from a sometimes turn two combo deck into a no turn four, turn five, sometimes turn three combo deck, but consisted more of turn four and turn five. Uh, and as we said earlier, we had three uh, turn three burn deck. So having the advantage of a two turns and with disruptive elements in the sideboard, uh, we just try to go as fast as possible and uh, kill them before they assemble their titans. Yeah, okay. There as well, it's about just closing the game as fast as you can. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And making sure they don't don't combo off in the end. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have some specific hate cards in the sideboard that are specific for land-based uh, combo decks, and if you use them, um, yeah, you are quite adventurous. Yeah, okay. So let's talk about those cards. What you bought out or what you bought in? Uh, we bought out Bottom Reveler and one Finale of Promise. These are two late-game cards you cast uh, to finish the game or refill up. You don't want to go into the late to mid uh, yeah. to late game against these decks because they're that's their territory and they will finish you off or combo you off. Uh, so we bring Alpine Moon and two Blood Moon. Just name their specific cards um, or play Blood Moon, and now their lands can't produce any color anymore, and um, you will eventually win the game. Sure, disrupting the mana base, 
preventing them from executing their combo and just, you know, do your thing in the exactly. end. And uh, yeah, finish them off. That's what you want to do. Exactly. Okay, well, that was the last matchup we wanted to talk about in this video. So we reached the end of the episode, sadly, because I'd like to talk about magic the whole day. <laughs> Playing but, the magic, magic yeah, the whole day is yeah. nice. <laughs> that is also nice, absolutely. But uh, the video eventually has to end. So, Unfortunately. Well, thank you very much, Joshua, for My joining pleasure. me here once again. The pleasure is all mine. <laughs> and a big thank you to all of you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you want to follow us on social media, you'll find all the information you need in the description of this video. What you can also do is follow Joshua on Twitter. you find the link to his Twitter profile in the description as well. All right, everybody. Thank you again for staying with us. Have a great time. Cast your favorite spells. And for now, it's goodbye.